Some slack lines require the use of a safety leash and harness to ensure against a slackliner falling from a great distance. Following the action of falling into the harness using the leash, termed whipping, a slackliner must perform three standard actions to return to a standing position. First, they must leash climb from sitting in their harness to hanging from the slackline. Second, they must mantle from hanging below the slackline to sitting on top of it. And third, they must mount the slackline from a seated position to a standing one. This video is part one and will review and demonstrate the most commonly used leash climbing techniques. Parts two and three on mantling and mounting can be found in separate videos. Figure of four. Drawing from the inspiration of ice climbing in particular, the figure of four uses the slackliner's arm as a leg hold in order to obtain a few extra inches of vertical reach. If you have tied your leash to the appropriate length, using this technique ensures your leash is long enough to walk on the slackline, but also short enough to climb efficiently. To perform this leash climb, bring your torso as high as you can and place your dominant hand around the highest portion of the leash that you can grab. Using the leg of the opposite side of your body, wrap the back side of your knee around the arm holding you to the leash. Adjust your leg to the most comfortable position on your arm and slowly apply as much pressure as you can through your leg and onto your arm. Once in a secure position, rock your hips and reach upward with your free hand to grab the slack line. Modified figure of four. The modified figure of four technique is obviously similar to the normal figure of four, but uses the leash itself rather than the slackliner's arm to climb upward. This approach demands less flexibility, but because this position places you lower than the normal figure of four, it requires a greater overall distance of leash climbing. To perform this leash climb, lean backward with your torso and wrap your dominant leg around the leash, such that your tie-in knot rests against your upper rear thigh. Drive this leg downward to assist in elevating your torso upward and grab the highest portion of the leash you can reach. Continue to climb hand over hand until you reach the slack line. Walking the leash. Again, similar to the figure of four technique, walking the leash uses specific placement of one of your legs in order to obtain a few inches of extra vertical reach. However, instead of fully wrapping your leg around something to obtain height, when walking the leash, you use the placement of your foot to achieve your goal. To perform this leash climb, lean backward with your torso and place your dominant foot on the side of the leash facing you. Pull your foot down the leash and towards your knot. Try to rotate your toes outward so that the leash falls into the groove of your foot's arch. Leaning forward, grab as high as you can on the leash and pull forward to match hands. While pulling forward, apply steady pressure into the leash using your leg. This will create a pull counter pull effect between your arms and leg on the leash. Continue to climb hand over hand until you reach the slack line. Campusing. Some slackliners find the use of their leg challenging for one reason or another. If this is the case for you, you may benefit from practicing climbing the leash without using your legs or campusing. To perform this leash climb, lean as forward as possible in your harness and straighten your back to optimize the height at which you can grab the leash to begin climbing. Transfer all of your weight from your harness to your hands by tugging upward with both hands. Once you've achieved even the slightest bit of upward distance, advance one hand upward as much as possible to fully extend that arm. Repeat this action of rocking your torso and climbing the leash until you are able to grab the slack line. Kicking your legs wildly may or may not help. Though rarely seen or used, this technique for leash climbing can have an arguable place in circumstances such as injury or partial exhaustion, but particularly can be useful for beginners who are unable to otherwise climb a leash using any other techniques. To perform this leash climb, lean as forward as possible in your harness and grab the leash to begin climbing. Then, match hands and pull as much as possible downward on the leash while aiming your feet upwards to hook them around the slack line. Focus on driving your toes downward into your core to maintain the bat hang and decrease the load in your arms, but do not let go with your hands. 
Then, starting from your chest and expanding into your lower abdomen, curl upwards while also climbing hand over hand up the leash. Continue to climb hand over hand until you reach the slack line. Boinking. Perhaps wildly unnecessary, this ode to sport climbing can only be performed on bouncy or very long slack lines, as it uses potential energy stored in the line to assist in the leash climb process. To perform this leash climb, grab the leash using both hands in a comfortable position. Alternate pressing down through your seat and extending your back and neck to initiate a bounce. Continue until you have reached the largest amplitude of bounce you can achieve. At the top of the next big bounce, quickly advance one hand to a higher position and regrasp the leash or grab the slack line. Leash climbing involves coordination, strength, and most of all, muscle memory. Practicing two or three leash climbs regularly can not only ensure you have a few tools in your kit, but also keep your muscle units programmed for these highly essential tasks. One principle in particular that is applicable to all of the above leash climbing techniques is that there is much value in the economy of movements during a leash climb. Because even though strength is absolutely important in being able to perform these actions, being able to perform them efficiently and over a long period of time is what will permit you to have more energy available to your standing practices. For example, when performing any kind of hand over hand motion using the techniques above, it is often more efficient to use a rolling action through your shoulders and torso rather than a pull-up with your hands and arms. Concentrate on isolating movements and with practice, you'll find the techniques that work best for you. Are you able to leash climb now? Are you interested in the next steps? Be sure to check out part two, mantling techniques, and part three, mounting, and keep your eyes peeled on Ascend's website for upcoming slackline events, classes, and workshops. Thank you.